Welcome to the Dream Life is Real Life podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Hermanson. I know it might seem cheesy or cliche, but if you've got a sleeping giant inside of you, or you just feel like you're made for more, then there's no coincidence you landed here on the Dream Life is Real Life podcast. Listen, as a girl from small town Wisconsin who decided to go all in to her dream life vision, I know how crazy it can feel to chase after wild ideas. Since leaving my nine to five job in academics back in 2015 to becoming a yoga teacher, a life coach, and now a digital nomad currently living in Merida, Mexico with my husband and Labradoodle, I know that all the cheesy cliches are true. I've watched a lot of my dream life become my real life right in front of my eyes. Oh, and I've learned a whole lot about sales, business, and marketing along the way. And I want to share all of that with you. So here you can consider me your friend and mentor as a certified business coach, success trainer, international speaker, author, and copywriter. I've helped hundreds of coaches, and entrepreneurs build, scale, and enjoy their online businesses. So here on the show, you'll find the real people, concrete tactics, and weekly motivation and inspiration to make your dream life your real life. I'm going to let you into the nooks and crannies of these dream lives and dream businesses and offer lots of real talk along the way. Because to be a true leader in whatever you're endeavoring in your life and to create a legacy that you're proud of, you need a tribe lifting you up with you on the journey. And I've made it my mission to be that partner with you. Because after all, we are all in this together. By the way, if you'd like some help improving your business and life, then we just might be able to help. Head on over to dreamlifeisraelite.com to learn more about what we do and how I might be able to personally support you and just continue this conversation in making your dream life your real life. All right, let's get to it. All right, today you have a treat. We are hanging out with my good friend and awesome person, actual rock star and coach Rusty Osborne, who helps men lose weight for good. He started one of his companies, Find Your Total Health, to help people live their healthiest and most fulfilling lives. And he's on a mission to end obesity. After overcoming obesity and unhealthy habits himself and dozens of his clients, he knows firsthand what works and what doesn't work when it comes to losing weight and keeping it off. (laughs) He's also the host of the Losing Weight Podcast, bringing the information and motivation to get healthy and stay healthy. And I am excited to have you over here on this show today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Hannah. Yeah, it seems like I can't believe this hasn't happened. I mean, we've known each other for years. We've worked together in different capacities and it's, yeah, time to to dive in here. So I teased it a little bit, but can you just tell the audience a little bit about your story? You know, love, rock and roll, burgers, like the whole thing (laughs) of where you're coming from. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So I I will say that I definitely had more tacos and burritos than burgers. And I still do, by the way, you can still be like lean and strong and happy and have plenty of tacos. But when I was a full-time musician, I was also fat and I actually was fat since I was a kid. It's just what my life had been. I don't know if I mentioned this to you before, but actually just sidebar ADD squirrel. Uh, I had uh, been looking through, I was with my parents looking through my baby book because my mom just brought it out for a minute and she had listed out and she took great notes over the years of like what I ate, what I was into, all these things. And from, you know, like month born, you know, born till the first few months I was on uh, like breastfed or baby formula, whatever it was. And once I hit about a year and a half, the entry was exactly the same for the next 10 years. And it said he eats everything and whatever's on his brother's plate. Oh, so interesting. I was like 18 yeah. months old. I'd been eating everything. Everything. Yeah. For some reason, somehow it was just like baked into me. Yeah. That's super interesting. My mom has mine only because when you went to preschool, you had to like tell the preschool like your favorite snacks. And mine was pintos and bean or pintos and cheese from Taco Bell. <laughs> like 
us toddlers, we, we were who we were, right? Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Wow. And it was for me, like the favorites were spaghetti and then whatever else was on my brother's plate. Like I just devoured it and it just had to happen for some yeah. reason. And so, and so that was actually a new update for me over the last couple, few months that I found that out. So yeah. throughout life, I just always kind of been the fat kid. I was never really good at anything. And the one thing I was better than everybody at was eating. So mm -hmm. I could eat more than you. Right. And then once it got to the point where I was drinkable age, I could eat more than you and I could drink more than you. I could outdo people in anything that was really over consumption. And so as a musician full time, when the food is free, the drinks are free, everyone is bringing up more drinks for us. And then you leave the gig and you're like, well, I'm definitely hungry. <laughs> you know, I'm going to stop at Del Taco and get the big Fiesta pack, which is a family pack size of food that I would then proceed to eat myself that night. Mm. And just this continual overconsumption to the point where, I mean, I got so stupidly drunk one night that I lost a bass guitar that was not even mine that I'd borrowed for this gig, this high end custom guitar. And, uh, just, I decided I got to quit. Like I need to stop doing this to myself. And I get home late that night after going around the entire town, trying to find this bass. And my neighbor had just found it next to my garage the night before. Cause I just left it there. <laughs> right. And so he put it up by the front door. All was fine. Universe just gave me another slap on the wrist, which it tends to do to me. I'm very lucky. And yeah. the thing is, right when I saw that I had it and everything was right in the world, I said, we got to celebrate. Let's go get drunk. Let's go get some burgers. And that was the point of like, oh, hold on. <laughs> like something is a mismatch. Mm. I just lost this. And uh, like, I mean, I'm surprised nobody was like arrested or died or anything. The cops were there la that night. Like it was a mess. It yeah. was a real rock bottom again. And I was about to just celebrate that I barely got out of that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's how our patterns work, right? Like, first of all, I think we all know that gut punch feeling of like, <gasps> I messed up or like I did wrong or I got to change. You kind of get that. Like for me, everything is like, in my gut. Like I can just feel things now. We all know that feeling. And then we all do the same thing. Like even little things, like I always leave the keys in the door. Like I shut that the keys are like, anyone could just like walk in the house. I always do it. And my husband's always like, stop doing it. Stop doing it. And then one night we thought the dog got out and I was like, <gasps> because you know, I don't know, like I connected it with like leaving the keys in the door. But then of course the dog was like sleeping upstairs. And I was like, Oh, like that never even happened. Like, those sudden bursts of inspiration or perspiration, you're like sweating because you messed up, are not enough to make change. We've all seen this in our lives or we swear we're never going to do it again. But minutes later, even we're back into the same old patterns. So what was it? Because I know now you're a master at mindset and changing patterns and rewiring your brain. But what do you think was that hot key in the door? Look at these metaphors just falling out of my face today. <laughs> um, tell us about the time that it was like, like, was this the moment? Was it after the bass guitar? This, this that you noticed the the pattern? Yeah, this was really the last rock bottom night. Like I had had plenty of other things where the universe is like, hey, time to change. Hey, this is it. Oh, you screwed up big time, but just slap on the wrist, like change now or, or else. Right. And we keep getting these lessons taught at us over and over and over. And they're just going to continue getting more painful until we learn the lesson to change our actions. Right. And that's just something that's guaranteed. No matter what, if you don't listen to the lessons, you will be taught again, which is good because that means if you're not hearing it, just, you know, have faith that if you continue improving, you will get there. And if I didn't learn the lesson this time, who knows what would have happened next time, right? Yeah. And for some reason, that was the time, okay, this was really horrible. Plus, I was hungover for God knows how long and just treated myself like garbage. And it was after I'd injured myself from running too much because I was already in this like exercise pattern too because I thought, well, what do healthy people do? They run. And so I started running marathons and ultra marathons. And I had a personal trainer. I was eating what the experts said I should eat, but that was just more overconsumption. Right. And so yep. that also was leading up to this one night, this one moment where, oh shit. Cause I also had this pattern of, if I woke up hungover, I had to run immediately. Right. And so that was a habit I built in thinking that that would help me out. Mm -hmm. But it continued to build this inflammation, hurt the body. I lost maybe 20 pounds with all that work, but it was that night 
of, oh, oh, this is overconsumption. It's not just that I'm not working out enough. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can relate. And I've noticed so many parallels between how I approach food, body, and weight and how I approach business, right? It's like, wherever you go, there you are. And I see this in myself too, where it's like, you know, this doing more is really tempting, right? Like do more to get more healthy, work harder, run faster, like add on workouts, like doing more has been a habit for me. And there have been some re some reprogramming and some patterns that I've had to cut in exercise, but also in business, because as people who are like go getters, doers, we have lots of ideas, you know, squirrel, that whole thing. Like there's a reason why our personality types are entrepreneurs and runners. And, you know, like we, we like going after goals. So you, I know you made change in your own life with the, the shifts that you made in your health. And it got you really inspired to start like telling other people, like what's on the other side of like figuring out the code to actually, you know, optimizing your energy and becoming healthy. So take us into like, when you just like how you got enough energy to then say, I'm going to make a change in my business and what I do as well. Yeah, definitely. So from that rock bottom moment, my wife, Nikki, and I decided, okay, well, let's try this nutrition thing. Cause I was already injured. I couldn't work out anymore. Cause it was another painful lesson from the universe. Like you're grounded. Like <laughs> You can't run anymore. Cause you're in so much pain. And so we say, let's figure out nutrition. And once we dialed in what works for our bodies, cause every person is different, right? When I figured out what foods work for me, I was still eating 5,000 calories a day easily and melting off fat. So I lost a total of 85 pounds. And then I put on another, I've up about 30, 35 pounds of muscle by now. And it's stoked. I mean, look at that guns, right? And so I'm <laughs> stoked about it to the point where I'm so proud that I like to show myself off. Whereas old Rusty couldn't ever do that. And so I've been making this change. I've got all this energy and I know that there's simple tools and systems anybody can follow to figure out what foods work for their body and which ones don't, which exercises work for the body and which ones don't, what health habits we need. And so when I was still playing gigs all the time, people would come up to me because they saw my shift. They saw me on stage every weekend for a few years and they said, wow, you've lost so much weight. How'd you do it? And I would tell them exactly what I did. And then they'd look at me with the beer in their hand and say, I, I couldn't do that. And they'd drink another drink of their beer and walk away. And that hurt me enough to where it was like, okay, it's not enough to just have the information. They got to have a reason. And so that's what spurred me to actually start the business was I needed to figure out, first off, I want to help people that are ready for help, right? Because I knew that that was a big piece. And then what is actually going to get people to want to change? And so that's where this all kind of started coming together. Like, okay, I want to help people. I want to help people decide to change because we all know plenty of people that are stuck in the same shitty patterns that aren't making the change. And they know, you know, they want to change. They know they want to change, but they haven't made the decision to. Mm -hmm. so that's where this business really helped figure that out a little bit more and more. Yeah. So that was really the, the impetus behind it was like, we need, like people need help. These people are sad. They're drunk. They'll come up to me later that same night when they're blacked out and say, Rusty, I don't know how to quit drinking. I can't do this. And then like I could tell them, but they're blacked out. They won't rec recall the conversation at all. Mm -hmm. right? And that hurt my heart so much that like, it was just so painful. I would leave like right when we're done with the gig, I would just like pack up and get out. Cause I didn't want to have that conversation again. Mm. Wow. It was a, it, yeah. It was a mess. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't like a mess. It was just sad. You know, yeah. The end of the day. Well, and I think a lot of coaches listening can relate. You've been through something challenging or painful in your own life. And you don't want other people to go through it, or you see a problem in society, or you, your heart is broken by something that other people don't have, or, and you, we have that as coaches. That's why I love coaches is because they really see a need and they, they're empathetic. They want to do something about it. So how, how do we just pack up and start? You know, <laughs> I think this is that impetus in the story that a lot of coaches are like, yes, I'm with you. I have the inspiration. I know it's a problem. I know the steps. I fixed this. I don't want anyone else to go through it, how I had to go through it. And now like business, like what? <laughs> um, 
So I would like to, yeah, like kind of get into when you like you had your program, you knew you wanted to help, you know, dudes lose a lot of weight. What were some of the things that speaking of coaching, if you could go back and say like in those aha moments, like Rusty, do this, not that for new coaches or for coaches wanting to break into a new industry, even um, what were some of those important lessons that you found those for that first year or so? Yeah, the first thing that I would tell myself back then is stop researching so damn much about the health itself. Because think about the 80-20 rule, right? 20% of the work is going to get you 80% of the results. I had already done like 95% of the research and I was still chasing that last five. Like it wasn't necessary because that isn't what's, that's not what's going to help people at the end of the day. Like those extra couple tools that I found out, like, oh, my this one client was having an issue with onions causing bloating, which means that he might have had whatever issue, right? Cool. I'm glad I could have found that out. And at the same time, I could have helped hundreds of more people if I stopped doing that research and shifted to business research. Like, what is it that's going to get more people in the front door? What is it that's going to get them to decide to change, give me money to change their life? right? Which is a beautiful ethical transaction. Coaches listening, please, you should make so much money. People should be coming at you saying, take my money, right? Ideally. And that only happens if you get great at marketing and sales. And so my coaching to myself from a few years back would be stop the health research, like do the the research that's fun enough to keep you passionate. But the second that you start working with clients, you're getting that real boots on the ground uh, experience, which is going to matter so much more. You're going to find out that, oh, that one thing that you think is really, really important was important for you, not for them. Mm, Yes. Yeah. And that's challenging when you sign up to be a coach and like, it is like you're passionate about your topic or your expertise. Right. And I think it's a hard bridge for some coaches to cross. That's like, okay, I have enough. I know enough. I'm qualified enough, like finding that sweet spot. Now I really need to become an expert or like, what do they need to do or look at or care about when it does come to the business side and marketing and sales, which, you know, if you don't have, you don't have a health coaching business, but a lot of people don't get that. So where, yeah, where do we look? What's most important when it comes to marketing and sales? So when it comes to marketing and sales, the things that I find most important, there's two pieces that in my experience have been game changers. Number one is authenticity. So you still got to be yourself, right? And you as a coach care so much about these people. You care so much that they make a change, right? So keep that caring. Remember that you are an expert. You can inspire change. People need your help, right? So that authenticity is critical. It'll come across in the Instagram stories that you make. It'll come across in the emails, right? It'll come across in the sales calls when you're on that conversation, right? And the second thing is use scripts and tools because, and this is something I learned as a songwriter, as a musician. If you look at all your favorite, most popular songs, they all follow the same structure. They all follow the same structure. So why not use structure the same way over and over and over in your sales calls, in your marketing efforts, in all of that, because your personality will fill that in. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. This is a very, very effective wheel that you don't have to reinvent. It's just a framework that brings out your personality in a way that makes people want to work with you. Yes. Okay. Folks, this was all rapport building, learning Rusty's story, (laughs) hearing his, you know, relatable moments of like being someone who had a problem or wanted to change. Like all that we're doing here, by the way, is building rapport. And I think what you just said, Rusty, is like there are so many podcasts out there. There's so many coaches out there. We're all doing very similar things. Right. If you look at the foundations or the like how we do things. But no coach is the same. Right. And like, I totally have this belief that we are all universal beings and there are enough firefighters and bakers and life coaches for specific people in the world. And if we can really come from that place of abundance and trust that authenticity, is going to be a big part of our marketing and sales. I think more coaches would be warmed up to it. But it's because we lead with the scripts and the framework and the cookie cutter, like this is how you have to do it. And it's boring because it's businessy. 
I think because we lead with that, it turns a lot of people off, a lot of coaches off from wanting to put themselves out there. They don't get like, we don't lead with this authenticity piece. Do you see that? Do you feel that? I've never, this is like leading edge. Okay. This is like a new idea. (laughs) I'm just realizing why that transition from coaching to marketing in our day-to-day work can be a challenge because we try to like fit a square peg in a round hole of a script. So how do we make it our own? And I think the first foundational mindset shift that we need is deciding that the script is not evil. Like a marketing tactic is not evil, right? And I had to come to terms with this too, and I'm still getting different like revelations and insights on this on, oh, that question that I ask in the middle of my sales calls, I know, I, I feel like I ask that with, with trepidation, like I have a reserve about it, but why? Like, it's because I feel like I'm being sneaky sometimes. And I don't want that. It's a genuine, I was reviewing a sales call this morning and the question was, does your, uh, does your wife support you in your effort to change right now? That's a great question. That's not an evil question. That's a genuine question, but I was asking it so that way I could figure out like, is he going to say, no, I got to talk to my wife later. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's still a valuable question that you can ask genuinely with authenticity. Look, man, I care about you. So I got to know if you need to talk to your wife before you're going to make a decision here. Yeah. Right. And so the questions you ask, the frameworks we use for marketing, the influence, the proven influence strategies that you use are not evil. They are just tools. They are just tools. Right. I think that the Nashville sound of the the country music that comes out of Nashville is just so overdone and overplayed and whatever, but it still gets millions and millions of listens every single day. Right. So People genuinely yes. get amazing value yeah. out of this one script, this one set of chords. These songs sound exactly the same, like, but yeah. there's still value. So if mm-hmm. we can make that shift in our mindset of bring your, just use the script, follow it, but just be as you as possible in that it's not evil. Yeah. It's there to help. Well, and the, and the intention behind it, right? When you just take a script and you are robotic and you try to just copy someone else, like that's when it never works. It doesn't come from that place of integrity, right? But when you can find like, why am I doing this? What's the intention? Like, is this actually coming from me instead of like, you know, the script that I got? And we're finding, you know, you've been very close to the pivot that we've made over here from telling coaches how to do this to like doing it for them. And I want to switch gears a little bit because I think that there's an important prelude to like a script or a sales conversation that ha- that relates to building rapport. And that's the online like person persona that you have, the personal brand that you develop. And you're someone that has a lot of character, a lot of energy. You know, you've been able to be on stages and your content has always been you know, noteworthy, I would say. It stands out. It's not just the same old thing, although I know you're using proven strategies and frameworks and you're not just like sitting down every day like, what random shit am I going to do? But you're like, okay, I'm going to plug this idea into this framework. So I want to transition into like content writing and copywriting a little bit because we've seen, and I want to know your experience, we've seen that when coaches lead with that personality, they use the frameworks, but they lead with personality in themselves online. It makes those conversations way easier. Like you even sometimes already know the deal with their wife before you're even on the phone, if you're leading with this kind of authenticity. So talk to us a little bit about your experience of, you know, building that personal brand, putting yourself out there as a coach um, and developing that, yeah, that rapport online for your business. Yeah, absolutely. And this is one thing that's continually been reflected at me as one of my superpowers is bringing that connection, that personality, that, that like no love and trust factor a lot. And so the things that really, and actually I think about reverse engineering this sometimes too, as far as like, yeah, we need to make sure that we show up, right? The mindset foundation, because I always, I, you know, we, we think mindset so much of the time. If you're on a sales call and someone doesn't trust you, they're not going to buy from you. And when you're on a sales call with someone who's watched your content for two years straight, they come on and they say, Rusty, I got to tell you everything that's happened. I'm so excited to tell you. And I really want your help to figure this out because I know you're an expert. Like, man, I'm so excited to work with you right now. And they don't even know the price. They don't know that it is technically a sales call. <laughs> like, and, and that's one of the most beautiful things is when you have 
all that rapport built because they've watched your stories. They've watched your, your posts. They've followed your journey. They feel like they know you so much that they want to tell you their deepest secrets, right? Which is important for massive change. So when you have that trust built, it makes life better and easier in every relationship. Like you probably want your wife or your husband to really trust you, right? So you can have great conversations. And, and maybe before you're married, you need that rapport built. So that way, when you ask for the sale, the, uh, you know, the marriage, you know, the engagement, she'll probably say yes. So all of that to say, what do we do? How do we make sure it's happening? Authenticity, first and foremost, with a script, like we already covered. But Oh, gosh, I lost my train of thought. I just got really excited about that reverse engineering idea. So <laughs> but yeah. like, this, like I could have easily and you'll see me do this in my stories. I could have easily like said, hold on, pause. Can we like reverse this and re-record? Like I will laugh. I'll be on. I'll be cold calling people sometimes because that's what I do uh, just on occasion like to or not cold calling, but they're in my pipeline, people that I've talked to before and I just want to call them again. If I'm on a voicemail and my mouth just starts flopping and doesn't know what to say, I'll say, wow, my mouth fell apart. So sorry. Hope you're having a great day. I hope that made your day better. Either way, I'd love to hear back from you. Here's my number. Yeah, well, that's a side hack. That's a total side hack for live video. People who are nervous about live video. Life is live. Everyone is used to seeing you <laughs> talk like a normal person and not be scripted or like so perfect. You know, I had someone ask me when I started my podcast, like, are you going to edit out the ums? And I'm like, um, no, this is who I am. This is how conversation goes. I want this to be like real talk, real life. And we have filters and robots and all this weird stuff that makes us think that we have to be super polished and perfect. And I think this is a permission slip and building on this idea of authenticity. Like it, it's not about perfection. It's about personality. And if you say, um, or your mouth falls apart, or one day you don't, you have messy hair, like fine. Right. I think those are the people that I appreciate the most or like the influencers that are in my dreams are not the ones that have the most beautiful YouTube channel. It's the ones who I feel like are talking to me on Instagram and they like get in my subconscious and then they're in my dreams. And I'm like, really, wow, you built rapport, even though you have like no idea I'm alive. Big influencers that I watch on <laughs> Instagram. Um, and that's powerful. We have access to that really powerful tool right now to share our personality. I think two things get in the way. Number one, perfection, like I'm kind of talking about. And number two, blank, ber like blank, blinking cursor, blank minds. I talk to so many coaches, Rusty, who get it. They get the theory. Like I have to show up. I have to show my face. They even figure out what they want to talk, like their personality. They're fine with that but they don't know what to say. They don't know their greatness. They're like, Oh, I don't really do anything special in my life or my business. It's like, we all run into this wall of like, I'm not interesting. So any tips on overcoming, like I have to be perfect or have all my shit together or two, like there's something that like excite, like what would I even share? What are some tips on those dilemmas? Absolutely. First of all, perfection is a killer. I literally used to have I had a panic attack once in a clothing store because I found a jacket that I was like, this is perfect. This is the jacket I was looking for. I put it on. It didn't have pockets right in the front where I wanted it. I freaked out. It wasn't perfection. I was there with Nikki. It was like before when we first started dating too. I was like, I need to go outside. I need to breathe. Like it, perfection paralysis was me. I would go to Starbucks and I had figured out before I walked in, okay, I'm just going to get a medium coffee, not going to try and say the funny words, like the, none of their language, just medium black coffee, please. And I can say that, walk in, it's perfect. And then they would say, and I wasn't ready for this, do you want room for cream? And I would like, oh God, no, how do I answer that? I didn't think about that answer. What am I going to do? And Nikki would have to like push me aside and say, no, he's good. And she would answer for me and we move on. So perfection paralysis, um, I have been, it's horrible. It's terrible. And it's so easy to let that show up in your videos, right? mm -hmm. let that show up in your content mm -hmm. and to let yourself just say, "Ugh, this one sucks. Can't post it. Try again. Oh, yeah. And then you're another day away from a client. Yeah. Right. And those clients are another day away from getting your help. So screw it. You're going to screw up. You're going to do a bad job at first. Accept it. The Beatles wrote so many songs and not all of them are good. 
<laughs> pretty bad. And like hundreds yeah. upon hundreds of songs. And that's the ones that they released even. How many songs did they write and never even put out? Because yeah. they were garbage. Yeah. So just do it. Put in the reps. Put in the reps. Put in the reps. Yeah. That is the way to get past perfection paralysis. Because you won't be perfect. Don't even try. Just open up your phone. Look at how silly you look talking into a phone in public. Because like... I actually was just doing this out in front of our house and this guy's driving by in his truck and he slows down to watch me do this. And I'm like, God, I feel like an idiot. Right. But it's life. Yeah. We're living life online. We just got to act and go and do and know that it won't be perfect. But the more reps that you put in, the yeah. better you get over and over and over and over. So yeah, I hate perfection paralysis because I've been there. <laughs> so you, yeah, and you learn so much more out of your head. Okay, when you put it out of your head, like the game that we play, like is this perfect? Is this done? Am I going to put this out there? It's like put it out and let's see. And I think when we look at marketing as an experiment and not something that we have to like figure out, but it's this like ongoing experiment as life is then there's a whole lot more permission to just like test it out. I don't care if it's perfect. Let's just see what, if people resonate, let's just see if people watch it. No. Okay, great. We'll do something else. Like, but getting those reps in is important instead of just banging your head. Like we don't want to be doing those reps anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And there's times where I've forgotten to make content for today and I need to go do this today, but I've got five minutes before my next call. Like you just have to make something. (laughs) <laughs> some of those videos have been my most viewed videos because it's literally me like, Real life. Uh, yeah, like, okay, the people that watch this, they want to lose weight. Uh, I know what to, what they should eat. Okay. I walk in the kitchen and say real quick, here's what you need to eat to lose weight. You see these, these are great eggs. Have those. I cook them in coconut oil. It's healthier. And I have a vegetable next to it. I like sardines too. Cool. Sound good. See you guys. <laughs> that was one of the best, most viewed videos ever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It took me a minute. In two takes, I did do two takes because the uh, first one was garbage, but the second one was less garbage and it was awesome to them. It's mm-hmm. not about you. It's not about you. So, yeah. And this, okay, that's the perfect segue to the other side of this, like making it about ourselves, right? When we want to have the right thing to say, or we want to look smart, or we have to think of something that we want to say, right? That's the thing. And I see this all the time with coaches. It's like, They, again, they don't think they're interesting. They don't think they have anything new or different or whatever to say. So how do we get over that (laughs) and figure out what to put out? The message to hammer home is it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. It isn't about you. You are insignificant little ant on this earth that is this insignificant rock in this vast universe, maybe multiverse, who knows, right? You are so insignificant, it doesn't matter, so stop it. Like, just help. Just help people, right? And these people that need your help are ready and waiting for just some information. And it may just be a quick two-second scroll. They see the list that you posted on your Instagram, and they're like, oh, good point. I should eat more spinach if my digestion is weird. Like, good job, health coach. You put something in their brain. You just helped them, and they saw your name next to it. Built rapport. Yeah. It didn't have to be good at all. Yeah. It's not about you. Just get out there. Just start helping the best that you can. I love that because it comes together in such a beautiful takeaway in that it's not about you, but you need to start showing up. If you have something that can change lives, if you know things that other people need to know, it's selfless to put it out there consistently. And again, if we look at marketing as this experiment and we test things out and we bring value and we show up repeatedly, we start to become top of mind. Hannah starts to dream about you because she's seeing you and she's thinking about what you say. And I think there's a lot of pressure that coaches put on that one video or that one post, like this has got to get clients in the door. This is going to be it. This is the thing that works when really branding is this living, breathing, multidimensional day in and day out thing. It isn't just one post. It isn't just finding the video. Great. Like if you find a video that performs well, figure out how to do more like that. But it's not like we just end and we're like, oh, I found it. I figured out the perfect blog to get me all the business in the world. No, it's like, how can we show up with personality day in and day out and live, live marketing, always be marketing, right? Um, Always. Within your healthy um, boundaries, of course, coaches. Right, right. There's <laughs> one more piece that I would love to add on to that too. And this is a, something you can use when you're influencing yourself 
to make a change in life, whether it's health or business, you want to post more, but you're not doing it right. Or for your marketing, it's a beautiful marketing principle. It's that people are stupid and they forget. Right? And we love these people with all our heart. Sometimes they're smart, but when it comes to marketing, people are stupid and they forget. So you can have five topics or less that you cycle every single week. And that's it. I'm going to tell you what to eat. I'm going to tell you how to exercise. I'm going to tell you how to sleep better. I'm going to tell you that it's important to invest in your health, right? Because we get money objections so much in the health world. Yeah. And you're giving yourself a money objection. I can't buy that healthier version of whatever. I'm just going to go to McDonald's instead. No, no, that's not worth it. And it's very ethical for you to tell people to spend their money on their health, right? And just those handful of things you repeat over yeah. and over and over and over, you will never, ever, ever run out of content. Ever. Oh, exactly. Exactly. When clients come to us to say, do it for me. I don't want to, this is great, but I still don't want to do it. And they come to us and they say, this is what I want done for me. I ask them, what are the objections that you hear on calls? You know, not just time, money, energy, but like specifics. Like I think I need cardio or I think I need this. And we find, we pull those five big problems out of the, our clients. And then we always know what to talk about. And it, you know, there's different ways to spin it, but I think that whether you're going to do it yourself or give it to someone else, that's a huge like step number one to thinking about what you need to post about what is relevant is like, what are your sales objections? Right. I've talked to my wife. All right, let's talk about how we bring your wife in on this and how it's going to benefit your sex life and all these other things that your wife cares about too. Um, so I think that's a great action step. Um, but anything else you would say, you know, is something that coaches can do today to start building more rapport and making their enrollments easier by becoming better at sales and marketing. What's one thing today they can do? One thing you can do today. Oh, make a video, just go like, just, just show up. And it's that authenticity piece. Like, yeah. look at how funny you look, like make, make fun of yourself. It's going to make you laugh before you start the video, which is going to pick up your energy, which people pick up on. And when you're on a sales call, same thing, show up as yourself. It's a conversation, not a way for you to trick someone into giving you money. Mm. Right? It's just yeah. show up just you. It's all it is. They came to you. They trust you enough to hop on a phone call or a zoom. That's a huge deal for someone to take time out of their day. So just show up yeah. as you as possible, ready to help and make a video. I love that. Yeah. Showing up, showing up as you taking some action, right? It's going to be an ongoing thing, just like health. Why not start today? Tomorrow, next time is the only day that that never comes. So go post a video, tag the coach, Rusty, tag Hannah Hermanson. Uh, we would love to see you just like getting into action because that's how change and results um, always start. So Rusty, I know you might have a gift or something you want to give away, but really how can people continue this conversation and stay connected with you and all the things that you are up to? Absolutely. So first and foremost, check out the podcast, Losing Weight. We got a great name. No one else had that name. I don't know why not. So the podcast is called Losing Weight. We dive into health and success in general because there's so many parallels, right? So coaches that are listening, anybody that's out there, like oh, I'm bringing as much for you as I am for the people that need to lose weight. So that's uh, that's number one. Instagram, the coach rusty. You can literally email me the coach rusty at gmail.com and a little incentive for you to do so. If you're not feeling as productive as you need to be, if you're not following through, you're not doing the videos every day for Instagram, like you know you should, or, or the emails, whatever it is that's your mode, that means that there's some sort of discipline lacking a system that you're not following through on to continually improve and get things done. So in order to improve your discipline, get a lot more out of your week and never miss date night again. I've got this book that I'm giving away from my mentor, Craig Valentine, and we're just on a mission to change as many lives as possible. So email me or DM me on Instagram, the coach rusty at gmail.com or the coach rusty on Instagram. First 10 people, you're getting a book. You get a free, free book. Just Hell yeah. no strings attached. I want you to be better. That's okay. It. Funny story. We live in Mexico, Meridas. It's a growing area, but we have one adorable, cute English library. And I've met Craig Valentine. I know all you guys over there. And I was browsing the like business development and there were two 
not just one, two perfect day formula books. And I just thought, wow, how special is that? I've read it. I have a copy, so I didn't have to pick it up. But y'all, what you are doing, it is getting around the world. <laughs> so share that with yeah. uh, share that with Craig, because yeah, I'm seeing them in our little tiny English library, two copies. So <laughs> I love it. Good stuff. Then obviously worth picking up, worth taking with you. So we'll make sure we have links to all the places you can connect with Rusty and get a free book to help you become more productive and live your dream life. So I love hanging out with you. Thanks for this jam sesh. And listeners, I'll be back next week with another inspiring guest that will help you make your dream life in business. And don't forget to hop on over to dreamlifeisreallife.com slash show for specific goodies that we talked about today and access to continue the conversation with these guests as well as myself. I cannot wait to see what you create. Until next time.